Since warm seasons are slowly approaching, it was time for me to free my bicycle from dust and oil its chain. And as you can see, its mechanical drive system still works without a problem. But for an electronics enthusiast like me, it is kind of boring. That is why I ordered an e-bike conversion kit for around 200 euros, which is not a bad deal if you compare the price to commercial e-bikes. But anyway, once I received the kit, I unpacked all the delivered goods and found a front wheel with integrated hub motor, a throttle, brakes, an electric speed controller and a couple of complementary components. So I simply removed my old front wheel as well as my front disc brake and secured the new electric front wheel in place. The whole process barely took around 10 minutes. Next I wanted to test the new wheel at home and thus connected the three motor wires along with the motor sensor connector and the throttle connector to the electric speed controller, according to how the manual describes it. Then I connected the battery connector to my lap bench power supply, which was set to its maximum voltage of 30 volts. And by powering up the system and turning the throttle control, the motor tried to start spinning, but never succeeded. The problem is that the 30 volts are apparently not a high enough voltage for the electric speed controller, which is something that bothered me quite a lot. So in this video we will create our own sensored electric speed controller which does work with lower voltages and thus allows me to test my new electric front wheel extensively. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. JLC PCB produces 200,000 square meters of single, double or multiple layer PCBs monthly. Upload your Gerber files to order 10 professional PCBs for only $2. To create a suitable sensored ESC, let's firstly have a closer look at the hub motor. After removing its metal cover, we can see that it consists of a dozen of coils on the inside, that do not move when the wheel is rotating. Simplified, the coil arrangement would look something like this, with the wires A, B and C being lead through the outside. The rotating parts of the hub motor on the other hand consists of neodymium magnets, with alternating polarity, which according to how current flows through the coil arrangement, align in a certain way due to the magnetic forces. That means what we're dealing here with is a so-called BLDC motor, aka a brushless direct current motor. I already talked about how you can make them rotate by creating your own ESC in a previous project. So definitely have a look at that if you want to know more about the theory of those motors. As a reminder though, we simply must connect each phase of the motor to either the supply voltage or ground in a very specific order, which repeats continuously to create the rotational movements. But does that mean we could simply hook up an ordinary ESC to the bike wheel and power it like that? Well, as you can see it does kind of work, but definitely not optimal, since such bike wheels are supposed to rotate much slower than traditional BLDC motors. That is why it got those three whole effect sensors attached to the motor. By connecting their red wire to 5 volts and their black wire to ground, we can hook the output of each of them up to the oscilloscope and see that whenever a magnet comes close to them, they pull their output up to 5 volts. This way we got three phase shifted square waves that tell us where the rotor is located. Now we can use this information to determine when the next step should be initialized. And just like that we no longer need the back electromotive force of the floating phase, which was proportional to the rotation speed and thus only usable at high speeds. And with the motor control theory out of the way, let's start creating our own sensored ESC. As you can see, I use P-channel and N-channel MOSFETs with an appropriate driver for each, to connect the three motor phases either to the supply voltage or ground. But since the P-channel MOSFETs turn on at 0 volts and turn off at 5 volts, which is the exact opposite of the N-channel MOSFET behavior, 
I simply added a Hexschmidt trigger inverter to the control lines of the P-channel MOSFETs, so that the programming for the Arduino will be easier later on. The last mandatory component was a potentiometer to set the rotation speeds and three inputs for the whole effect sensors. And with those guidelines in mind, I started creating a schematic for the project, which in the end turned out to look something like this. So I gathered all the required components and started soldering them to a piece of perfboard and afterwards to one another according to the schematic. And if you're interested in experimenting with your own censored BLDC motor, then you can of course find the schematic, code, pictures and more information about this project as always in the video description. After 4 hours of soldering, the circuit was finally complete and after inserting the ICs, all that was left to do was the programming. Now while the code which I created looks pretty intimidating, it is quite easy to understand if you are familiar with external interrupts, pin change interrupts, the free run mode of the ADC, timers and port manipulation. So have a closer look at my other videos and learn all about it if you're interested. Anyway, what the code basically does is firstly waiting for a state change of one of the Hall effect sensors. If one happens, the Arduino determines which step needs to be activated. Then timer 1 says, ok, let's activate the corresponding MOSFETs of the step. But after a certain amount of time, which is determined by the potentiometer, the timer 1 then says, let's connect all phases to one another and take a quick break before we power the phases once again. This creates a PWM signal, which basically lowers the average voltage and thus lowers the current, which lowers the magnetic forces and thus the rotation speed. This process continues until there's another whole effect sensor state change, which then activates the next step. So in theory, the code should work fine, which means it was time to upload it, connect the motor wires as well as the whole effect sensor wires to the board and power it all up. And as you can see, the wheel starts rotating and the speed can be adjusted by the potentiometer. But as expected, the wheel rotates rather slowly with a 15V supply voltage. But it is still a lot of fun to play around with. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and are looking forward to the next episode of the electric bike conversion project. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.